Welcome people! Today is the 31st of October when I am recording this, so a late happy Halloween from here. It's also the final day of Inktober, so in the occasion to kind of celebrate that and talk about Inktober, I've brought a special guest from earlier. And let's just see if I can bring him here by using this fella here. Welcome Hello there. Welcome. Thank you. My little device actually works. I was summoned. I'm gonna be using that in the future, I think. And you are alive, I see. Uh, you have survived Inktober once, once again. again. Once again. Once again. And you have uh, been doing Inktober how many times? This is my third year. Third year, um, yeah. First one, it was in 2019. Just dabbled a bit. I don't think I made it through all 31 days. And then we did it last year and this year. Yeah. Where we spared. Yeah, yeah last year we kind of sent um, each other's drawings, like we, we, we made a drawing and then sent it to each other and exactly. had feedback in that way. Yeah. And that was kind of nice. Yeah, and, and kind of held the pressure on yeah. to keep doing it, that you have to had to share what you had done. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the whole thing about Inktober, we think. The thing about creating something where you are kind of having fun, while at the same time you are under a lot of pressure actually, because you want to create something that's intriguing as you yeah. mentioned. Yeah, yeah, it's the it's the pressure of doing something that you think is worthwhile, intriguing for others to look at, but still is fairly manageable so it doesn't take up a whole lot of your time when doing it when you have other things in your life as well and, and you have to go to work and you have to do other social things and then push that thing into your, your daily life. Exactly. Where you have to sit down and do maybe an, a half an hour or an hour and a half or two hours of drawing every day. So maybe this is a video where you're gonna feel intrigued to try Inktober, uh, some of you, hopefully. Maybe this is a video where you're gonna be scared away <laughs> from seeing it, or it could be a kind of therapy for you guys out there who has been doing Inktober. And if anything else, maybe you like our drawings and think it's fun to have a little walkthrough with us. We're gonna select uh, some highlights of our sketchbooks and I think we're gonna do it this way that uh, Matthias will select um, five of my drawings. Or, sure. or yeah. uh, less, I don't Five-ish. know. Five-ish, and I'll select um, five-ish of Matthias Drawings. This is the one you chosen. Yes, I've, we've already selected a couple of drawings that we want to highlight. Uh, and so this is Matthias' Inktober book here. So the first drawing that we see, we also see a sketch. Actually, <laughs> we can maybe come back to that later. This is uh, drawing number two. Suit, I believe it's, it is. Yeah, and I chose this one uh, to talk a bit about because I really like. I fell in love with it instantly, and I think it's. Partly because I love uh, the um, the wind in the willows, Mr. Toad. Mr. Toad, yeah, yeah. the character, yeah. and I really think that you like and captured the feeling of Mr. Toad, and you know his pose and all the details. And what was was this the first like idea that came to your mind when you? Not at all. No. 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 The third. The the first thought was like something simple, like we talked about uh, in the intro, something that was intriguing but fairly easy. To execute, uh, so I was thinking like um, like a penguin, in a penguin suit, mm -hmm. uh, like a t uh, like a tux. Mm -hmm. um, but that's I mean, drawing a penguin in a tux zero is quite difficult. Yeah, but but they are kind of in a tux already. Uh huh. With yeah. the with the white and and the black jacket with the penguin uh, tails on the jacket. Yeah. Um, so that was why I wanted to do like this kind of suit, but hmm. the penguin idea felt too easy. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so You're already on day two, <laughs> you kind of wanted to switch gear already there. Yeah, I had a lot of energy in the start. Yeah. Um, and you wanted to do something that stands out a bit and maybe differs from your normal style. This is not at all what I usually do. Um, you can see in some of the later drawings, this is not kind of my thing. Okay. Mr. Toad was the inspiration for this. Yeah. Um, or some variation uh, variation of Mr. Toad. Um, that snubby nosed frog <laughs> type. Um, and then I just had a picture of this lounging frog in a chair with his pipe. And I just felt like I needed something in the background to create. So another. first so first you did kind of Mr. Toad sitting yeah. there and then you did the background afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. Because uh, he was my focus. Yeah. And then it just feels empty without the background. I, I need to impose him in some setting. Yeah. Even though I need some shadows in this one to make him feel like part of the setting, I still need the setting to contextualize where he is and, yeah. and, and kind of the mood. And then you, you mentioned to me before that you the difficult thing is sometimes to, to draw, especially like people or characters sitting in a human-like way. Yeah. So how did you go about uh, like grounding him? Because he seems very grounded, like he's really sitting there on the chair. I chose like positions for the arms and the legs mm -hmm. that was manageable uh, with the skill level I have. Um, so. I figured out some poses where, where this felt natural and then drew the, the chair and the, and, the, and the cane so that the things, the points that make him, makes him grounded was mm. done afterwards so I was sure that he was connected to it. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, interesting. Um, interesting. Yeah. I love the distribution um, of, of, of black and white here and yeah, this is a good interpretation of Mr. Joe. <laughs> um, yeah, let's move on to sure. the next one. That I've chose that we should talk about. Another little sketch. Another <laughs> sketch here. Um, yeah, so the spirit. The thing is, I know my approach is always to do the, the frame. Mm -hmm. I love to do the frame. Yeah. Not that I had to be restricted by it, but the things I want to be in focus has to, in some way, break out from that frame, and then the rest of the image can fit within it. So you mean by by making this frame, then you make the branch. Yeah. Pop in from the corner. Yeah, so so this is this has to be like the focus point. I want I want you to look at this branch where he's ah, sitting first. Interesting. I didn't and then that, everything okay. else is within the frame. Okay. And is is then for me at least considered background. Yeah, because this is that we're gonna see this later also. Mm -hmm. This is kind of become your watermark, like your trademark. Uh, it's, doing these it's, things that crawls out of the frame. It's my approach to the Toba because it helps me narrow down how much I'm gonna do. Okay, if I have the yeah. frame, then I have to keep within the frame. Mm -hmm. And then if I do something special, then it can reach, That's interesting. reach the frame. I think I have the exact opposite uh, <laughs> approach, actually. That's quite, uh, quite clever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about the motive here. Yeah, you uh, chose this one. I don't know why. But... I'm a huge Miyazaki fan, and you are also. Uh, and sure. you are also a huge lover of, uh, well, all sorts of Japanese, uh, both anime yeah, and... I think it's fun. And, and Ghibli yeah. Studios, especially, is, is yeah. just so beautiful. And this seems like a, to me like a character from um, Princess Mononoke. It sure um, was the, the inspiration, but it's a Kodama, mm -hmm. a tree spirit. A tree spirit? Um, okay. And it's, uh, it's heavily featured in exactly that movie, um, Princess Mononoke. But it's, it, it, they also feature in games and, and, and other kinds of lore. Um, and I just think that it's kind of scary, kind of cute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, um, yeah, that's true. That, that, the small small guy uh, prancing around on the on the branches, um, but still this empty look, the black sockets for eyes and and yeah. empty stare. Uh, and also the thing just like in terms of composition, like he's just he's not in that dead center in the middle. He's just like a bit to the right, and that makes him more interesting to look at. I actually don't know. Um, Is that a coincidence or purely like, coincidence? But really? I, I think I've heard something um, like an art. You can you can never place something in the sensor. It ha always has to be a bit off. Yeah, yeah. Like if even if, if it's a uh, horizon when you do a landscape or anything, it can't be in the sensor. Never in the sensor. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> he's perfect there, right? And this is what I love about, uh, like I was talking about with the frog, what you can do with shadows. Yeah. This, this atmosphere you can create um, with the really dark shadows. What did you use for, uh, for the highlights here? Um, white ink 
Yeah. Or a gel, gel marker. Yeah. I think it's called. That's an area I haven't uh, dug into yet, but maybe no. maybe next year. That's fun. Yeah. Um, but because I, because I use this paper that is this kind of off-white, um, mm. the white gel stands out a lot. Of course. Yeah. So I have to use it quite sparingly mm. to, to make small details. Let's move on. I can tell that we have something for the fan. This was kind of like, I don't know if, if you saw the first picture we started on when we started filming. It was this Japanese woman yeah. sitting with the, I don't know, it's some kind of uh, Asian guitar, Japanese kind of instrument. But I kind of wanna wanted to do her again, but now with a fan. And then I wanted to like have a focus on the hand because I'm, I'm terrible at drawing hands. And, and I wanted to just the, the position of the hands and how the fingers curve and bend mm. um, and, and to make it look natural. And yeah. I had too much focus on it. And, and this is disproportional hand size, head size, but I still think it, it turned out pretty well. I think I mean, it's really nice. I think it's a good, it's a, it seemed very natural. And I think I just love this way that you place the fan. Yeah, again, you have, yeah, you have to do what you can to like spare yourself from too much work. So mm -hmm. make some kind of big thing that overshadows a lot of the other things, but still it it has to seem kind of intentional. Mm. So she waves the fan in front of her face. And again, we have the um, some of the motive popping out of the rectangle here of the, of the frame, and uh, then we also have something that I've I've seen a lot in your work, like a lot of the lines. Yeah. Um. Like not I don't know if you call the fish lines, but like. These lines following rectangular uh, patterns or diagonals. What do you what do you feel when you draw these? It's kind of meditational. Yeah. You can say. But the fan popping out that's the same thing as, as everything else. I want like the focus to be on the thing that pops out of the frame. Mm. She's not the image. The fan is. Mm, okay. Um, and then these I don't know in Danish it's uh, I don't know it's kind of how you make some kind of flaw. In Danish we call it silabins paket. When you when you do it like this and then on a, on a large scale, I, mm. I really like how it does something. It it seems dynamic, mm. um, but calm. Mm. But I think it's funny or um, fascinating when you say that the fan is the most important subject uh, in the image because I can really see that. But also it's crazy because the fan really becomes a part of her, like her her identity in her life seems kind of summed up in her her expression and. I don't know, yeah, it's just like they're they're part of the fan, kind of. It has to be connected. Yeah. Um, thematically or mood-wise, it has to coexist. Yeah. So, day seven, and we'll see how the energy <laughs> is on another day nine. You mentioned this one, and, and you were um, then you mentioned that this was one of the ones that were where we weren't satisfied with it. And I think it's important that we also <laughs> take one of these with us and talk a bit about that one. What was the prompt for this one? Pressure. Pressure. Yeah. So the idea was something graphical that is clear to read. Mm -hmm. Coal under pressure becomes diamond. Ah. The yin yang um, in the black and uh, in the in the colors. Ah. Cool. Um, like the difference between coal have little value and the diamond has a lot of value. There was a lot of thought going into this one yeah. and, and the execution was fairly okay, but I miss details to really show that it's cool. I, I could hear on you that you maybe didn't realize that until yeah. I said it. Yeah, no, I, I, I think I saw it maybe more as a shadow really. Yeah. But now that you do mention it, I can see. Uh, it was like, I, I thought cool, totally black with the white background and then under pressure it becomes this glittering diamond yeah, who lights really up the dark. Idea. Um, but when I look at it, um, maybe the coal and diamond bit is okay. In the difference between this one and one of the some of the earlier ones is that this one is entirely within the frame. Yeah, it doesn't pop out like the, the it doesn't other pop. No. It just doesn't pop. It just doesn't pop. It is. It isn't. But this error really does. Yeah, though. but it isn't intriguing. Because it seems so flat. That's mm -hmm. just my opinion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my own worst critic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing we also talked about. Like in October, you're really, you really are the, your own worst critic. Um, but this is what kind of one of the things I actually love about October. Yeah. That of course you have to play within the real the realm of what you actually know how to do and can do within the time limit, but still you. 
every day you kind of push yourself a little bit further yeah. and try something new. And this is one of the places where I tried something new with the diamond and and the white gel yeah. to try to make it pop. And I, the idea was better than the execution because I tried mm. something else. With those words, we move quite a bit further here to... 10 days forward, <laughs> yeah, almost to day yeah. 17. Collide here. Yeah. And um, that was one of the drawings that when you posted it, I was really like, hey, that's <laughs> something new going on here. Yeah, because but, uh, we have like a, a double exposure, like uh, we have something, yeah, like two actions going on really within one motive. Yeah, I didn't know what to do actually <laughs> with the collide. I'm, I'm, it's that's not it's such an October thing. <laughs> I, I, I actually like drawing animals, you know that. But I wanted to try something new with the frame, like. First, I did the two uh, bucks, goats. Um, like I was doing them colliding instead of cars or anything else that couldn't collide. I think it was funnier and more dynamic with yeah, with with uh, with animals. Very creative, very creative. Um, yeah. Normally, that would be it. They yeah. popped out of the frame, and then I could do some scenic background. But I had I've always lost the eyes, of course. Mm. So I thought maybe a big eye. And then, mm, no, that didn't function very well. And then I thought it could be funny like to do the, those horns. I really like um, the technique in that, how you do one swirl and the other swirl. And it, it looks very beautiful, this, these swirls. It makes this dynamic 3D. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to do that on a larger scale, but I also had to get the face within. So it was something new, like this, this large image with this smaller image in front. Um, but again, I started with the front and worked backwards. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the way that I kind of interpret it, I don't know if that's the meaning of it, but I kind of see like, you know, I can, I can almost like, I used to feel like the, the bang of these, yeah. these two um, goats yeah. banging together. But, but also I kind of see like maybe that the face here, the head here is one of these two in that, in that moment colliding. Maybe I have to disappoint you. Okay, uh, that's not the case. Uh, no, uh, I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. If you interpret that, um, yeah. that I didn't went a lot of thought into this. I think the composition was cool. Yeah. And I would, I, and I felt like drawing animals. And this fit the bill. Yeah. That's it. I really like <laughs> it. But, but I'm, I'm really satisfied with the outcome. Yeah. Um, I think it turned out well. Yeah. But I haven't got much to say about it. Uh, other than <laughs> that was one of the good days yeah exactly it, it took a long a lot longer than i expected though how long did it take you to finish this one for let's say from from uh the conception of the idea to to the last stroke so not not with the idea generation yeah yeah with with the idea generation at least a couple of hours yeah two three four hours yeah um a lot of the the strokes and the inking is just tedious. It's I, I love inking, but it takes time. It takes time, yeah. It, it really does. It's a hate-love relationship. It really is. Yeah, but, but something nice, a, a, a good podcast or a fun YouTube video going on in the background. Yeah. It's kind of cozy. Yeah. I, I really like it. So it's just about finding the time, mm. like these two, three hours, to sit down and just do nothing else but that. Yeah, it's quite rare actually that you get that you kind of set off time to yourself in a way and just sit yeah. down and focus on something. Yeah, well, you, you got work and you got a relationship, you got other people in your life. You, yeah, you can't just zone out every day for four, three or four hours. No, there's plenty of things on Netflix that you can you can <laughs> exactly. uh, chill out to. Uh, yeah. So what happens then? So quite a jump again. Day 27, and I'm looking, I have to be looking forward to this one because once again we're kind of in the fairy tale shower here. Yeah, and you know I hate drawing people. Yeah. Yeah. I love drawing animals. But hey, you people. managed, you managed. Yeah. Um, this is quite a journey. Um, the word was spark. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just nothing that pop, that comes to mind other than... Um, other than a spark from, I don't know, those your New Year's Eve uh, sparkling sticks. Yeah. I don't know what they're called. Um, I really, I, I, went, I went into this one head empty, totally. But I did <laughs> like a Google search on spark and found spark the, the dog uh, and made a quick sketch. But uh, this isn't my style and it's just like 
drawing from reference. And you, you couldn't feel your integrity uh, no, with this exactly. one? So uh -huh. all the days leading up to this one, I had one song stuck in my mind by uh, Bruce Springsteen. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's Dancing in the Dark. I can't start a fire without a spark. Uh -huh. um, and then I just thought of doing a karaoke machine. But then it led me to what, what makes a spark? Um, a tinderbox makes a spark. You make a spark with a tinderbox. Tinderbox is in Danish called Fyrtøj, and Jose Andersen, a Danish writer, uh, have written a story about the soldier and the tinderbox. And this is like in the in the in the start of the story where the the witch has convinced him to crawl into the tree. Yeah, true, um, true. Yeah, to take so, this so this is actually box. the whole image. This little tinderbox he has it in his belt. This is the whole image, that, the <laughs> that, detail there. That's the tinderbox. But, that's interesting. But then I wanted to expand like the adventure yeah. of Jose Anderson and, and uh, the soldier in the tinderbox. And then I wanted to draw the soldier. And I, when you search on, I don't know, the tinderbox, the soldier in the tinderbox, it's kind of iconic, like the soldier and, mm. and the witch. That's the most images that, that pops up. And I believe the idea generation took me days yeah uh, but when i finally settled on this i think the pose and actually also the ink it took me about an hour an hour yeah just the pose to get that right um some some of the things are disproportional but like the pose with the legs and the arms and how he grabs to pull himself up and then inking one hour interesting that at day 27 that you kind of had the uh the energy to to keep thinking in your eight hour before you kind of settle for it. Well, I didn't have the energy to maybe that was so hard. Why it was so hard to find like the idea? But that what that is also what makes the difference when you find something you think is funny, mm -hmm. um, and you just go with it. You find that extra energy to continue. Yeah, because you just feel. feel yeah. you have I to felt. I felt this one. Yeah, you felt it. Uh, yeah, um, I like it, and also kind of. I don't know if you feel the same way, but uh, again, maybe it's just me interpreting, but. Uh, Kind of yourself climbing up that inktober tree. Maybe, and almost being there. And like, oh, he's, oh. he doesn't know what's on the other side. That's just also part of inktober that you never know how the outcome <laughs> is going to be. Yeah. Crawls in that, into that ink. He's crawling into ink, actually. Yeah. And also the way that you stretch it, like spark. What does he not have? And blah, 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 like that. It was far fetched. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> um, but sometimes you have to search a bit longer for something that you find interesting just to make something that you can see yourself do yeah but still within the time limit and 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 your skill set exactly uh, i think that was it that was it right yeah that was let's it. just for fun see what the very last one oh was. no <laughs> <laughs> uh, the last one was was, was done in quite a hurry um and, and yeah as you said it's risk it's a risk yeah. crossing the road. Yeah. That's a small animal. And it's a risk doing it over each year. Yeah. But well, this is kind of, at this stage, you are incredibly tired. Naked. Exactly. <laughs> you, you, really, you really feel the, the fatigue. Yeah. And then, you know, you do the last one. It's okay. You're done. And when you lay down your pencil, you just know, okay. The next day, there's nothing. Yeah. It's such a relief. November. But the relief to be done, but also to uh, to have accomplished. Yeah. To be proud. To finish it. Yeah. To, to see it through it. Yeah. Um, I really like that. Thank you for this uh, explanation. That's interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. After a short break of the cinnamon <laughs> roll. Yeah. We're ready to part two. Yes. Um, and... We thought about flipping through you, your beautiful Inktober, Inktober 221. Yeah, this year I really wanted to kind of dedicate a whole sketchbook to it and kind of commit myself more to it. And make it more special. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've chosen something I want you to talk about and maybe we can discuss, discuss a bit. Um, so I'll try not to reveal too much of what has been going on over there. Maybe I can flip like this. Yeah. So. This is the first one I chose of yours. Um, also spirit. Interesting. <laughs> also spirit. Spirit is, is also a nice prompt. Um, yeah. Why I like this one, um, and generally uh, all of your work is like, you You don't make a frame. No. You're, you're actually <laughs> just going to make what you want. Make, make what you want. Um, 
and of course this is the spirit but i really like the mood mm. um, i know you may you used some special ink for this one yeah i fell in love with mushroom ink this year so i've been pretty much using mushroom ink in, in every prompt because i don't know just the texture of it and i just in general i like to use um like ink washes mm. yeah so fun to play with i think the wash is so mellow Mm. Um, so it, it creates a tone. Um, I see this winter wonderland, um, like this forest with snow everywhere, and this little guy running through it. Um, I think it's it ha it has a lot of I don't know amb ambience is not the right word, but um, I really like this one. Yeah, and the, the thing that about mushroom inks that's kind of difficult to get um, contrasts. Yeah. So I, I tried to actually like get the attention downwards towards this also wood spirit actually but um yeah i didn't really succeed but uh but the mellowness like the the lack of contrast yeah it's maybe what makes me um to believe it is a winter wonderland because like if it's snowing it washes out the details mm -hmm. don't know like if it's heavy snow in, in winter like the features of the building and the features of the trees get gets muddied and like this like everything is is kind of in the background behind like the snow Misty veil snow. yeah yeah i really like it you should do like <laughs> maybe a whole series of this mushroom ink uh, drawings from the woods yeah yeah maybe like this uh, a story from from the woods yeah and or maybe actually <laughs> you inspired me to draw some winterscapes with yeah. the mushroom ink could be interesting could function very well so short jump forward to day day something but watch, watch yeah. what's the prompt <laughs> on this day. Why did I choose this one? I just like the look um, of the rep. Mm -hmm. uh, his look, his look in, in, in his eyes and his face and, and the motion. And then of course, this story element that imme immediately make you, makes you think of uh, um, Alice, Alice in Wonderland, right? Exactly. Um, just think it's great. I don't know, I can see you used the ink the yeah, mushroom ink again, again. The mushroom ink. And I really think it yeah, it worked quite fine here with a fine liner. Oh actually, yeah, pilot, fine liner. Yeah. And and you mentioned before no frame, but actually this <laughs> year I've taken the frame to me, inspired by you. Yeah. And it's not like a straight frame, but a like like a wobbly frame. And I think I like the idea of frames because yeah, it frames. <laughs> <laughs> it frames the motive. It really does. Yeah. Like without it he would have seen very uh, lost or lonely or and it gives you a boundary to draw within. So that you don't have to take it in the whole page. Yeah, uh, but actually I started out drawing the leg and then after finishing the figure, I, I drew the... On the frame comes the frame. second? Yeah. That's new from, from me at least. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with your style and, and how you, you did the frame, I it makes me think of a comic. Yeah. More than mine, it looks more like a restriction. Yours is more like this is just one frame. Yeah, true. Maybe of, of, a, of a comic or a movie, a storyboard, or something like that. Yeah, because maybe because it doesn't fill out the page. Maybe or... because it's not centered. Yeah, you know, this it's like there's something more. Yeah, exactly. On the next yeah, page or that's missing. True. Yeah. Um, and I love how you you do uh, shadows um, to make the figure stand out. This is the watch. This is the watch, and actually, and also on his wrist. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of watches. He's a busy, he's a rabbit. Yeah, kind of like Inktober, like <laughs> running to the next, <laughs> the next prompt. Did you find hard to come up with ideas? Um, this one seems pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, not maybe the Alice Wonderland take, but like the watch being busy. Yeah, this one came quite quickly because I, I don't know. I I thought of yeah, just a watch instantly, kind of sure. And then quite quickly he, he popped up in my mind like the rabbit uh, looking at the watch and running like you don't have I don't have time I don't have time and then yeah it just kind of came quickly this was one of the ones that really came quickly you actually said to me like the first well what five fifteen days came a lot easier than later <laughs> yeah in the month the first fifteen days were like yeah come on next round next round that's just very playful you got it down yeah exactly and then it just on day 18 or 19, just like fatigue coming in strong. Hit the wall. I didn't have any lust or ideas, <laughs> uh, kind of, you know, to, to continue. Yeah, like you run out of steam. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. 
<laughs> but the difference between us, I think, how we approach it is I like to prepare. I, I, I sometimes prepare ideas I have or small sketches like you saw mm-hmm. uh, when you when you flip through my book. I had small sketches I've done on an earlier point, um, on an earlier date. But you come up with the ideas on the day. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, you you have the approach of kind of looking at the prompts already, maybe two weeks before October or one week before. Yeah, late late September. Late September. Yeah. And I feel like I wanna. Um, see the prompt like the day before yeah the prompt day <laughs> so kind of one day before yeah not not more mm. i don't know i i have an idea that this makes it more intuitive but it's also is it's it varies sometimes it's also really nice to kind of know the prompt two days before i would find it extremely stressful yeah like not knowing what's coming up and 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 if i have a good idea weeks uh, be- uh before I can like conceptualize mm. and then know when I've done that, I can lay it aside and know this one is done for when I, when I get to that date, I have the prompt, I have the sketch and then I can, re- can mentally, mentally relax. Yeah. That would um, be interesting to know in the comments. Are you a planner or are you a, a person who doesn't plan or like draws on the prompt day? We are as, as persons, um, all, quite different yeah yeah um i like your approach because it's it's kind of true it's it is more intuitive in some way in some way yeah um but also you don't have time to broaden your search true true yeah or go down different paths and say this doesn't function for me i have to do something else it's very back against the wall (laughs) yeah you you (laughs) have to come up with an idea and then execute next yeah let's go to the next one um this one just again like comic book esque. Um, it, I feel like it tells a story. I'm just gonna zoom out a bit. Uh, patience. Maybe you can tell me a bit about it. I really like it. Yeah, it's uh, it's for a book actually that I'm gonna maybe write someday in the future. Yeah. Cool. So these are two of the characters, the main character to the, to the left here, and and his uh, girlfriend uh, to the right here, and uh, I'm not sure exactly what the story is going to be about but it's very adventurous and uh and then i remember that we we went to, to the movies yeah. and watched dune like three days before i think this drawing so so we kind of have this um thopter inspired oh, thopter yeah. actually yeah you know, it's, it's clearly a crash but i can see now yeah it has that animal shape yeah animal plane is yeah, yeah. thing i kind of wanted to do goldsmith uh yeah yeah, with the eyes. Yeah, and I, I w- it went a bit too fast. I didn't do many sketches before that, so I could have done more in terms of uh, preparational sc- studies. But yeah, it it uh, that's how October sometimes is. <laughs> but what I'm happy about the most is the 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 smoke actually coming from the engine. I was just gonna say, um, it all seems quite busy, but it it reads also quite clearly that tree crash. And then you have the people, but but the negative space mm. makes it stand out, and, and exactly like the smoke on the on the totally when you left when you leave it all white, it just pops in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And then I guess mushroom, mushroom ink, of mushroom course, ink. <laughs> always mushroom ink. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, yeah, combination of uh, marker and then a CD marker that's kind of worn. So, CD marker. Yeah, actually, the CD marker that's yeah. haven't hasn't been used for many years, so it's very uh, yeah. I'm gonna throw it out soon, but it's you can create out. these dry textures. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I really like it. I'm looking forward to reading your book then. Yeah, give it <laughs> ten years or more. <laughs> we'll get there. So, in the spirit of Dune, I actually chose this one as well. This for me is a lot like the first one, Spirit. Um, I feel like you use the the mushroom ink system to to quite a great extent um, with a great result. Like this, I know these two stand out quite clearly. Clearly, and and the prompt was compass, mm-hmm. um, which makes perfect sense. But I love this desert, like all the mellow tones just blending in to one. Um, but it's clearly dunes and it's clearly shadows and. It's clearly quite wild. Uh, why, is, why 
for hast. Ja, ja. <laughs> fast, 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 ja. Thank you, mate. Ja, um, yeah, actually, I had to, because it's so mellow, I experienced that in, in the spirit drawing. So I kind of had to mix a lighter wash of it, which I used for here, and then I could kind of, this is two layers. Yeah. To kind of make it more contrasty. But yeah, um, yeah. But this is also, you say this is two layers, but did you dilute it beforehand? Because some of the other ones are darker. Uh, Or is it more layers? layers? It's, this one is double layers, but actually it's, it's not it's not diluted, no. Hmm. It's, it is quite watery, the mushroom ink. Hmm? Actually. Yeah, you, you gave me some, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have not gone uh, around to using it yet. You will go there. But uh, yeah, really, and I, I kind of like to, I have done that sometimes, you, you mentioned the comic thing, mm. I like to do more drawings than once sometimes, mm. making like this comic kind of look, I think that's a fun way to play around with it. What I'm quite unhappy with though is this blob here, like, again, I'm so bad at doing sketches and you really excel at that, and maybe I should do more of a sketch because... But I don't think it's, I don't think it's the shadow, it's more like the ridge line. If this ridge line has going been going downwards here, mm -hmm. maybe the shadow, if you remove this bit, had been making more sense. Yeah, like this is a curve. Exactly, down. exactly. Um, but dunes are, are hard to draw. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're so simple. I was like, it's just um, uh, blah blah blah, but then ah oh, no, it's not. But you get the idea of the vast that then. The vastness. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the vastness. vastness. And that's what I'm happy about. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna drop that word from now on. Um, <laughs> 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 but like you catch the mood mm -hmm. I feel like these two uh, I think it's the lost in the desert just had that crash um, and, and you get that sense it's just going on yeah I, I like it a lot can you spot the sandworm Ooh. I'm just kidding, there are no sandworms in there. Because <laughs> I, I couldn't see one bit. <laughs> but, uh, I was like, should I put one sandworm in? And I was like, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess it up if I do. <laughs> I'm happy I did. It would fill the entire negative <laughs> space. <laughs> Last one, I think. Yeah. It just made me happy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you are fatigued and you're tired and it's, it's difficult to come up with ideas and, and, and you live your life around this uh, as well. And then you're happy like it's it is fun but it's <laughs> yeah. ex extremely hard to get this <laughs> splat flat yeah feeling um it really has that feeling of like kind of pretending to be or pretty, putting on a happy face <laughs> even though he's like smashed completely <laughs> yeah and it's so simple but it, it reads so clearly yeah um it, it was really a self-portrait in a way it's you yeah it is yeah <laughs> So that was some highlights from this year's Inktober. And you were saying something before about people. Yeah, um, I think like you can see like on, on the web that a lot of people um, attend Inktober, I think. Um, and I think everyone gets something different out of it. Totally. For me, in my daily life, I, I don't manage to do that much art. Uh, drawing. I really like drawing, but I don't always get around to it. And this, in a good way, in a bad way, forces me to do it. Mm. Um, I love how it forces me to do it, so I actually get something. I love to do it, like the process, and I like the results. I like to have it afterwards. Um, but it's also hard when you're not used to it, and, and, and I don't actually gain other than like my hobby pleasure from mm. it. I don't, uh, it's a lot of time, uh, especially crammed into one month. But yeah, I really like it. And, and, and this relief, sweet relief you get when you're done. Exactly. Yeah. And also I, th I have s been in contact with some people who are almost like burned, get burned out uh, from Inktober. Yeah. And I think that uh, it's really it's a question of timber, but it's, it's a, it's, um it is difficult to have that balance between creativity, playfulness, and doing a drawing that you kind of are satisfied with. But I don't know, do you have any advice to people out there? Just do what you can manage on, the, on any given day. Um, if you choose to do Inktober, just do something. I think the creator, I can't remember his name, um, his idea was just to do 
a sketch just to do something every day to kind of um, keep his skill set uh, mm-hmm. up to date on doing analog drawing. Um, and it could be that for you. Um, it could be you can do just for idea generation for something else. Exactly. Just a small something every day for 31 days, like when you get pushed by a prompt, then you do something, maybe you work on something else, and you can use those prompts in that work as well. Yeah, true. So, I don't know. And also you can, we talked about that also, that you can create a doodle, a tiny sketch, a tiny drawing on a post-it, hmm? a small scale, and you can maybe do a five minute doodle, you don't have to... It doesn't have to be some kind of finished work, like it's polished or anything. Um, Actually, it's something that you can you can take two things out of this. You can you can take like the polished, super clean something else, done piece of work, or you can just take like the idea generation and then, as you say, make a sketch, mm-hmm. small size, post-it note, easy, um, and then use those skate sketches on a later date um, because some of this exercise is maybe just to get the idea of one prompt and and do something that is fun. Fun, I think, is the key word. And with those words, I want to thank you all for watching along. If you watched this far, you're pretty amazing. And you've probably did in October. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And it was a pleasure to have you here. Do you want to travel from here with a bit of magic? I don't know how else I'm going to get home. So, yeah, of course. Press the button.